he leans his head back. He knows that this very day can be one of his last. It could also be a day he'll remember years from now, while sipping an espresso in a cafe or lying awake in a bed, in a city still unknown to him, but far away from this place. Should he have left the country when the riots were just erupting, as so many had? But where would he have gone? This is an excerpt from Daily Surfer's novel, The Septembers of Shiraz. In the novel, the main character, Isaac Amin, has been captured by the Revolutionary Guards during the Iranian Revolution that took place throughout the 1970s. Understanding the history behind the revolution will enhance the meaning of the novel. So what exactly happened during the Iranian Revolution? It began during World War II when the Axis powers of Germany, Japan, and Italy were up against the Allies, including superpowers such as the United States, the Soviet Union, and Britain. Concerned that Iran's Anglo-Persian oil fields would fall in the hands of Germans between August 25th and September 17th, 1941, both Britain and the Soviets invaded Iran to ensure the supply lines and secure the Persian corridor. invasion, Allied forces deposed Iran's monarch at the time, Reza Shah Pahlavi, in fear of his relations with the Germans, replacing Reza Shah with his son Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi in September of 1941. Allied forces were hopeful for Iran to become more accepting of Western influence under the new Shah. However, controversy continued concerning Iranian oil fields. In 1951, Dr. Mohammad Mazadegh rose to the political forefront as Prime Minister of Iran. Mossadegh was committed to re-establishing constitutional monarchy and nationalizing the oil industry in Iraq. Believing the Americans were indifferent about Anglo-Iranian oil, he anticipated their full support. However, Americans feared communist overthrow of Iran's government and were eager to remove Mossadegh. The Shah himself attempts to throw Mossadegh in a coup, but in the end, the coup fails and the Shah flees to Italy. With the help of the British government and Kermit Roosevelt Jr. of the CIA, Mossadegh is removed in 1953 under Operation Ajax. The Shah returns to Iran later that year, and General Fazullah Zahidi comes into office as new Prime Minister of Iran. In 1961, former religious leader Sayed Hossein Brouhardi dies in Gran Anatolia, Ruhollah Khomeini surfaces as a potential successor for his writings concerning the expansion of Sharia Islamic law. By 1963, Khomeini launches a fight against the Shah's regime. The White Revolution, as it was known, was the Shah's efforts to reform in Iran. His intentions were to institute land reforms, women's voting rights, and minorities' rights to obtain government office. Khomeini and his followers protested against the reforms, but Khomeini was soon arrested and sent into exile. Nineteen seventy one marked the celebration of twenty five hundred years of the Persian Empire. The Shah's extravagant celebration, including the building of the Azadi Tower in Tehran, brought much discontent to the Iranian people. The gap between the poor and the rich had been greatly exaggerated throughout this event, and many believed the money spent could have been used more appropriately in social services. Another grievance against the Shah's regime came with support for political rights with influence from United States President Jimmy Carter. As a result, the Shah granted many prisoners amnesty and allowed the Red Cross to visit Iranian prisons. Soon after, liberal opposition began issuing letters to denounce the regime. By October 3, 1978, the Shah deported Khomeini to limit his connection with his supporters, but that didn't stop the resistance. Protesters insisted Khomeini's return. Eventually, by January 16, 1979, Mohammad Reza Shah Pahlavi leaves Iran and Ayatollah Khomeini returns and becomes the leader of the Iranian people. In the end, Khomeini's regime becomes just as oppressive as the Shah's monarchy had been. But in the novel, Isaac Amin and his family represent the small faction of people who remain supportive of the Shah throughout this reign. The author of this novel gives noteworthy insight to their lifestyle under the harsh revolutionaries. Of the Shah, Sofa writes, perceived for decades as the beacon of the Middle East, he was now suddenly viewed as the tyrant who had crushed anyone who dared speak against him. He was in fact both of these things, but in those final days, as he lay there dying in Cairo, Isaac saw him neither as a visionary nor a despot, but as a man who had wished both himself and his country to be something they were not.